February 12th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Exodus chapters 27 and 28 from the Old Testament. You are to make the altar of acacia wood, 7 feet 6 inches long and 7 feet 6 inches wide. The altar is to be square and its height is to be 4 feet 6 inches. You are to make its four horns on its four corners. Its horns will be part of it and you are to overlay it with bronze. You are to make its pots for the ashes, its shovels, its tossing bowls, its meat hooks, and its fire pans. You are to make all its utensils of bronze. You are to make a grating for it, a network of bronze, and you are to make on the network four bronze rings on its four corners. You are to put it under the ledge of the altar below so that the network will come halfway up the altar. You are to make poles for the altar, poles of acacia wood, and you are to overlay them with bronze. The poles are to be put into the rings so that the poles will be on two sides of the altar when carrying it. You are to make the altar hollow, out of boards, just as it was shown you on the mountain, so they must make it. You are to make the courtyard of the tabernacle. For the south side, there are to be hangings for the courtyard of fine twisted linen, 150 feet long for one side with twenty posts and their twenty bronze bases, with the hooks of the post and their bands of silver. Likewise for its length on the north side, there are to be hangings for one hundred fifty feet, with twenty posts and their twenty bronze bases, with silver hooks and bands on the post. The width of the court on the west side is to be seventy-five feet with hangings, with their ten posts and their ten bases. The width of the court on the east side toward the sunrise is to be 75 feet. The hangings on one side of the gate are to be 22 and a half feet long with their three posts and their three bases. On the second side there are to be hangings 22 and a half feet long with their three posts and their three bases. For the gate of the courtyard there is to be a curtain of 30 feet of blue, purple, and scarlet yarn and fine twine linen, the work of an embroiderer with four posts and their four bases. All the posts around the courtyard are to have silver bands, their hooks are to be silver, and their bases bronze. The length of the courtyard is to be 150 feet and the width 75 feet, and the height of the fine twisted linen hangings is to be seven and a half feet with their bronze bases. All the utensils of the tabernacle used in all its service, all its tent pegs, and all the tent pegs of the courtyard are to be made of bronze. You are to command the Israelites that they bring to you pure oil of pressed olives for the light so that the lamps will burn regularly. In the tent of meeting outside the curtain that is before the testimony, Aaron and his sons are to arrange it from evening to morning before the Lord. This is to be a lasting ordinance among the Israelites for generations to come. And you bring near to you your brother Aaron and his sons with him from among the Israelites so that they may minister as my priest, Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, Eleazar, and Ithamar, Aaron's sons. You must make holy garments for your brother Aaron, for glory and for beauty. You are to speak to all who are especially skilled, whom I have filled with the spirit of wisdom, so that they may make Aaron's garments to set him apart to minister as my priest. Now these are the garments that they are to make, a breastpiece, an ephod, a robe, a fitted tunic, a turban, and a sash. They are to make holy garments for your brother Aaron and for his sons, that they may minister as my priest. The artisans are to use the gold, blue, purple, scarlet, and fine linen. They are to make the ephod of gold, blue, purple, scarlet, and fine twisted linen the work of an artistic designer. It is to have two shoulder pieces attached to two of its corners so it can be joined together. The artistically woven waistband of the ephod that is on it is to be like it, of one piece with the ephod of gold, blue, purple, scarlet, and fine twisted linen. You are to take two onyx stones and engrave on them the names of the sons of Israel. Six of their names on one stone, and the six remaining names on the second stone according to the order of their birth. You are to engrave the two stones with the names of the sons of Israel, with the work of an engraver in stone like the engravings of a seal. 
you are to have them set in gold filigree settings. You are to put the two stones on the shoulders of the ephod, stones of memorial for the sons of Israel, and Aaron will bear their names before the Lord on his two shoulders for memorial. You are to make filigree settings of gold and two braided chains of pure gold like a cord and attach the chains to the settings. You are to make a breast piece for use in making decisions, the work of an artistic designer. You are to make it in the same fashion as the ephod. You are to make it of gold, blue, purple, scarlet, and fine twisted linen. It is to be square when doubled, nine inches long and nine inches wide. You are to set in it a setting for stones, four rows of stones, a row with a ruby, topaz, and a barrel, the first row. And the second row, a turquoise, a sapphire, and an emerald. And the third row, a jasmine, an agate, and an amethyst. And the fourth row, a chrysolite, an onyx, and a jasper. They are to be enclosed in gold in their filigree settings. The stones are to be for the names of the sons of Israel, 12, according to the number of their names. Each name according to the 12 tribes is to be like the engravings of a seal. You are to make for the breast piece braided chains like cords of pure gold, and you are to make for the breast piece two gold rings and attach the two rings to the upper two ends of the breast piece. You are to attach the two gold chains to the two rings at the end of the breast piece. The other two ends of the two chains you will attach to the two settings and then attach them to the shoulder pieces of the ephod at the front of it. You are to make two rings of gold and put them on the other two ends of the breast piece on its edge that is on the inner side of the ephod. You are to make two more gold rings and attach them to the bottom of the two shoulder pieces on the front of the ephod close to the juncture above the waistband of the ephod. They are to tie the breast piece by its rings to the rings of the ephod by blue cord so that it may be above the waistband of the ephod and so that the breast piece will not be loose from the ephod. Aaron will bear the names of the sons of Israel in the breast piece of decision over his heart when he goes into the holy place for a memorial before the Lord continually. You are to put the Urim and Thummim into the breast piece of decision. They are to be over Aaron's heart when he goes in before the Lord. Aaron is to bear the decisions of the Israelites over his heart before the Lord continually. You are to make the robe of the ephod completely blue. There is to be an opening in its top in the center of it with an edge all around the opening, the work of a weaver, like the opening of a collar so that it cannot be torn. You are to make pomegranates of blue, purple, and scarlet all around its hem and bells of gold between them all around. The pattern is to be a gold bell and a pomegranate, a gold bell and a pomegranate all around the hem of the robe. The robe is to be on Aaron as he ministers, and his sound will be heard when he enters the holy place before the Lord and when he leaves so that he does not die. You are to make a plate of pure gold and engrave on it the way a seal is engraved. Holiness to the Lord. You are to attach to it a blue cord so that it will be on the turban, it is to be on the front of the turban. It will be on Aaron's forehead, and Aaron will bear the iniquity of the holy things, which the Israelites are to sanctify by all their holy gifts. It will always be on his forehead for their acceptance before the Lord. You are to weave the tunic of fine linen, and make the turban of fine linen, and make the sash the work of an embroiderer. For Aaron's sons you are to make tunics, sashes, and headbands for glory and for beauty. You are to clothe them, your brother Aaron and his sons with him, and anoint them and ordain them and set them apart as holy, so that they may minister as my priest. Make for them linen undergarments to cover their naked bodies. They must cover from the waist to the thighs. These must be on Aaron and his sons when they enter to the tent of meeting, or when they approach the altar to minister in the holy place, so that they bear no iniquity and die. It is to be a perpetual ordinance for him and for his descendants after him. God, I love how the name tabernacle means dwelling place, at least in this instance. 
that it was where you were dwelling among your people. And I think now, now that you've sent your son to die for us and the Holy Spirit dwells in our heart, that we should have that same awe and respect and fear and sanctification that, that the people in the Old Testament had when you were dwelling among them. You know, I wonder sometimes how we would act if we could physically see you around us. It's odd that we act differently even though you can see everything about us, but I suspect if you were dwelling among us, physically dwelling among us, um, and we had this temple that we traveled with, this tabernacle that we traveled with, um, with all of this ornamentation in the, in the priest and all of the, the processes that happen within it, I wonder if our life would be different. And, and I know how the story goes. I know that Israel isn't different, uh, that they sin just like we do. But I do sometimes wonder about that, that if we could physically see you, would we choose to act different? I don't know. I don't have an answer to that. I suspect, no, I suspect we would be just like Israel. But I do know since you dwell in our heart that we can come to you at any time, that we don't have to go to a tabernacle or, or someplace sacred. We don't have to talk to a priest who talks to you on our behalf. Um, with the coming of your son, you have, have torn that veil that they're talking about um, and removed all of those things that you reside with us each and every day in our hearts. And God, that's kind of a wondrous thing if you intentionally think about it. That if we can go through the rest of today intentionally realizing that you reside within us. That's pretty amazing. So how could we not love other people with the love you have for us? And how could we not be grace-filled with other people? And how could we not be joy-filled when we have you inside of us helping guide our way and our path? Today, God, I want to work on that. I want to work on being intentional about the fact that I am filled with you, filled with your Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit resides inside of me and is sealed in my heart forever and ever. And through that and through you, I can do all things. It's pretty incredible to think of how much work it took to create all these things and to the specifications and all the talent that came together. Not to mention just all the products that went into making this, that they actually traveled with all those things. Um, thus the plundering they needed to do from the Egyptians to get ready to build your, your tabernacle for you. It's just amazing to think. But how even more incredible that now that you've sent your son to die for us, that that tabernacle lives inside of us, that you dwell inside of us. That all that glory and excitement is inside of us every second of every day. That's never further away from us than just a thought, an intentional thought of remembering that you are here with us. God, thank you for your consistency. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for loving us with a love that we just will never understand. In your son's name we pray. Amen.